All right, hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to show you how you can use the timesheets function within Xero to make your payroll a little bit easier. Now, before we get into the video, I'll just ask that if you feel like you have gained anything from this, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos, please hit the subscribe. We're doing a bunch of videos on Xero. We're also looking at Myob and Excel at this point. And we'll see how we can uh, put out some videos to help you guys get to where you need to be with your bookkeeping. Now the timesheet function can be very handy if you want to streamline things a little bit more within your current payroll process. So perhaps you're using a paper-based timesheet system or you've got clock in, clock out cards or some kind of other app. Um, and then you're coming in and entering the hours in the payroll manually at the end of it. There's nothing wrong with that, but if you want to tidy it up a bit, get rid of all the paper um, timesheets or, or get rid of other apps and just do it all through Xero, what you can actually do is you can give your employees their own login to Xero, which will allow them to go in and enter their own timesheet figures, but it won't allow them to see any of the data in zeros. So they won't be able to see your bank rec, they won't be able to see your invoices or the other payroll data, any of that. You can switch all that off so that they can only see, only have access to their personal timesheet entry. So the employees can go in, log into their personal login and enter their timesheet for the fortnight. Then they submit that and then that's gonna send through a notification to the manager or whoever is uh, approving payroll. And that person can then go in, look at the timesheets that the employee has entered and they can either approve it, make changes, reject it, whatever needs to be, whatever needs to be done there. And then once they're happy with it and approved it, then they're the numbers that will flow through to your pay run. So it's a good way to put a bit more onus back on the employee to take responsibility for their timesheets and an incentive to do it and get it done and submitted by a certain time so they can get paid on time. And it's also a good way that you can streamline the payroll process a little bit more if you are using an external timesheet system or you're using a paper-based system, you can get your employee to enter all their info, and then you can take a look at it, approve it if it's all correct, and have it flow through automatically to your pay run. So it's quite good like that. All right, so let's take a look at how it's done. So what we'll do, we'll go here, we'll click, at the, click on the payroll menu and go down to timesheets. I'm also going to open up another window here for the actual pay run that we're going to process. So we'll go payroll, Pay employees. I'm just going to remove this draft pay run here because I would like to start from scratch. And we're going to be doing the fortnight ending the 14th of November. All right, so let's add a pay run. And we're going the fortnightly calendar for the fortnight ending 14th of November. And the employee we're going to be looking at for this example is James LeBron here. Now, if we click into his payroll, we'll see what the default figures are. And you can see here, he's got 76 hours at $20.18 per hour. Now that comes from his payroll template that's set up in his employee card file. So I'll just show you that very quickly. So if we go payroll employees and we click on James LeBron pay template and there you can see we've got ordinary hours, 38 hours and a $40,000 salary which they've worked out to be, the system has worked out to be $20.18 an hour. Now this is his default setup so if you do nothing if you don't enter any timesheets, if you don't change any hours, this is what's going to flow through automatically to his payroll. And we can see that here, but this is set up on a fortnightly calendar. 
So his 38 hours per week becomes 76 hours per fortnight. But if you process a timesheet, what it will do is it will actually overwrite the default here. So I'm going to show you how that's done. So we'll go add timesheet, employee, James LeBron, for the period ending 14th of November. And what you basically do, you break it down week by week. For, for, so first you do the week ending the 7th of November, and then you do the week ending the 14th of November for those two weeks that will make up the fortnight ending the 14th of November. So you enter the earnings rate here, ordinary hours. Let's say he did eight hours on the Monday in the second week, the week ending 14th of November. He did eight hours on the Tuesday, eight hours on the Wednesday. But let's also say that he did two hours overtime on each of those days. And that's it. So he didn't work this week at all, the week ending 7th of November, the first week. But in the second week, the week ending 14th of November, he did 10 hours on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to make 30 hours total of 24 hours normal time and six hours overtime. So we're going to approve that. And then we'll go back over to the payroll here. And all you have to do well, either you do the timesheet first before you generate the payroll and it will flow through automatically here, automatically here. But in this case, we'd already generated the payroll in draft status. So to bring through those timesheet figures that we just processed, I'm just going to go down here and click on reset payslip. And now we can see here those 76 hours default have gone and we've got 24 hours at normal time and six hours at overtime, which looks like time and a half. And you can see out here, 24 hours normal time, six hours overtime, there it is. And here, this little icon pops up for the timesheet. You can see that these figures have flowed through from a timesheet, but it also allows you to click on it and go have a look at the timesheet. And you can see here, there was nothing on the first week and on the second week. That's what we had. So then all you have to do is save it and move on to your next employee. Simple as that. Now, if you'd like to book in a training session, have a look at the description in the video. We've got a link there to our website. We can organize a tailored training session to help you guys get to where you need to be with your bookkeeping. Hit us up and we'll see what we can do. If you liked the video at all, if you learned anything, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe as well. We're putting out plenty of content here in relation to Xero, Myob, Excel, accounting in general. So if you want to see more, come along and have a look at that. Other than that, guys, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one.